Hello everybody. Uh, in this seminar on altmetrics, I will continue to discuss kudos and some tips on research visibility. I am Mark Roinla, representative of altmetrics in, in the center campus. I will discuss especially kudos. It's a commercial cloud-based visibility service for all fields of science. Its purpose is to make as easy as possible for a researcher to increase and maximize one's visibility in social media. The tool is designed especially for researchers of natural sciences, where technical language makes it difficult to understand the title or the abstract of the article. This can reduce the willingness to read the paper, however important or interesting it might be. In Kudos, the article is given a short and informative title. Its content and importance is explained with the plain and clear language. And the article itself is complemented with various support materials such as datasets. Finally, the Kudos profile of the article is shared to social media such as Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn with one click. An open access version of the article is a plus, but it's not a necessary, necessary uh, feature. According to a study published in PLOS, downloads per article can increase up to 23% when it's properly described in the Kudos tool and shared through it. This figure is in line with my own experiences. Recently, Kudos has showcased a new pro version where a profile can be made for a research group. Unfortunately, the University of Helsinki doesn't have uh, that license yet. The Kudos profile of the researcher functions as a window to one's research also because you can link to other profiles to it. For example, Orgid, Academy Edu, ResearchGate, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. Therefore, Kudos is a handy way to follow the distribution of one's articles and their visibility. It has won a number of innovation prizes and is integrated with Thomas Reuters' Web of Science Metric Service and Altmetrics Explorer. University of Helsinki Library has acquired a license to the basic version of the Kudos, so it's free to use for University of Helsinki researchers. I will now show you a bit about our, our research guide. So here you can see the page on Kudos. There are some uh, kind of basic information on Kudos, then some tips on how to use it, and here's a video of in Finnish of, of, of the Kudos, and some uh, other uh, videos. And then you can see some profiles of University of Helsinki researchers on Kudos. Maybe I show you one so you can see how it looks like. So here you can see uh, Dr. Massimo Figueras' page, and here are his publications. But now uh, let's go to the tool itself. You can uh, go to, to the tool from www.crowkudos.com, or you can use our links. So there is, if you don't have a profile in Kudos, here's the link, an invitation link for you. And if you do have a profile, here's a, a link that you can use. I will use that as I will show my own page as a kind of example case. So here we are in my page. I will show you the public profile first. Looks like this. So there can be a picture, affiliation, co-authors, and then uh, links to other profiles. Here is Orgit, ResearchGate, Academy Edu, Twitter, LinkedIn, here's a Zenodo community link, and then email. And here are the publications involved. Let's go to the public profile uh, and then look at the settings. So first, settings. Maybe profile first, so maybe it's easier. So here you can add your uh, photo. It's useful because then you get to you get to see uh, you, the readers get to see your how how you look like, and then that's kind of more more familiar and kind of nicer to see what the person looks like. His affiliation name, uh, role, subject area, country, and so on. And uh, here's in, in institutional affiliation. 
and then you can add your other profiles here is orchid research gate academy edu mendeley if you have one twitter facebook linkedin a youtube profile if you have one and then other link for your own, of your own choice and then the email address so fill this and then go to settings so here you can connect your social media accounts this is useful because the idea is that after you have described the article, you can share this, the article to these different accounts. Here you can fill your email address and then you can use email subscriptions where you can choose what, what to get from Kudos. The most important one is here. So you have to, you should add your COVID number to this page because then you can click this manually import from orchid that means that all your publications are manually uh, automatically imported from orchid so you don't have to put them you don't have to add them one by one and this is very useful because it saves you a lot of work unfortunately uh, in most cases uh, this is where the researcher stops so he, uh, he she creates this this profile mm -hmm adds this information and then fetches the publications from Orchid. But it does, this doesn't really help you a lot. It doesn't help your visibility almost at all because there's only bibliographical information available and you can get that easily from, from other places like Academy Edu or elsewhere. The idea with the tool is that you will explain your publications and describe them so it's easier for for the reader who are not uh, perhaps familiar with with your field of science to get to know what you are saying and that is why uh, we have to go to the publications so here are listed my publications not all of them but those which i have choosed from from market to to be fetched so let's look at one example Here is a page uh, where you uh, will kind of explain the paper. In the first, you can see the information. There are three authors, and it was published open access in, in, in a journal called Signum. And then there is the plain language title. You have some examples. The idea is that it is kind of understandable for a layman, for a layperson and then what it is about so it's sort of sort of description on on what the article is about here are some examples then why it is important this is something which is not uh always very immediately clear from the article itself so this is very useful for 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 a lay person to understand why why you, why you have written this article and then you can see some perspectives. There's nothing here, but you can add, for example, your own research history concerning this article or some feedback that you have got from the article or some other useful information for the reader. Then you can add uh, an image into the article, for example, the cover page or the journal or whatever I think you think it's useful. And then here's the most important one. After you have done all of all of these these, uh, these explanations, then you can share your uh, article, and you can share it to the social media accounts, or you can get a link from here. So there are different labels that you can generate link, and uh, when you click this, it automatically shares your article to these different social media accounts. I will not do this here because it has already been shared a few times. Then you can also choose the geographical regions of interest. For example, if the article is about Africa, you can choose Africa as kind of main target area. And then you, you can link uh, resources. You can link the article itself, for example, if it's an open access version or postprint version in the repository, for example, you can uh, link it here so people can get to see the article itself. Or if it's a data set, for example, a poster or whatever, so you can link it 
link it here. And here in the end of the page is the activity of, of all your activities concerning this, this one article and your co-authors co as well. And here you can invite your co-authors with the link to this publication so they can add their perspectives and uh, share the article themselves. And here you can see the kind of percentage that this description is currently. So the higher the percent, percent the, the better the explanations are. And then you can, uh, uh, maybe I'll show you this reader view first. So then uh, you can see what it looks like when a when, uh, person comes from example of Twitter to this uh, Look, look at the, the uh, article, it looks like this. So there is an explanation on uh, how it looks like and why it's important and so on. And then when you click this, you can get to the publication itself. But uh, you can also see the publication metrics from here. You can see the number of shares. It has been shared to the social media. And then clicks on these shares. And then views on Kudos, the page I should just show you. And then uh, how many times it has been clicked uh, to, to read the article itself. And then alt metrics score. Using this Altmetric Explorer it is very useful because then you can see who has shared the article in Twitter, for example, and with what kind of message. Here are some shares of the article from Twitter, and there's one in Facebook. Then there are some graphic ways to do this to kind of show how the article has spread. It's a bit slow now. The one in, from Kudos and there's similar from, from Altmetrics. Uh, okay, here it is. So you can see that this uh, sharing this article in, in the your social media has, has uh, increased its visibility. And a similar one from Ultimate Explorer. And then you can see the activity, the share activity in the in the end of the page. Maybe I'll show you one in English as well. It is in Finnish. So here is a, a publication page in, in English. Well, you look at this, I, could, I will add you some good and bad features of Kudos. The best thing about Kudos is the easy way to promote the articles. One can get visibility with a little effort and with a little time. Of course, you need to spend a little time with describing the content of the article, but it's recommended to do this once the article is still fresh and the arguments are clear in one's head. Kudos can be thought as a promotion campaign where it is shared simultaneously to various social media accounts or only one, such as Twitter. After that, it's nice to know that metric, uh, follow the metrics and see how your article spreads. Kudos is already pretty well known, so there are researchers who like to follow Kudos links because they know what to expect, that is, perspectives and clear explanations of the contents of the article. And of course, it's free to use for University of Helsinki researchers. The downside is that you need to spend a little time writing the descriptions or ex explanations. However, from my own experience, I, I can say that once you get some routine to this, you can complete the article in, two, in five to ten minutes. You can also work on them every now and then. Actually, it's not advisable to publish all your papers at the same time, as the social media logic, especially Twitter, does not work that way. A better strategy is to publish one every day, for example, or every week. 
in addition, you need to create an audience to your work. So if you have a Twitter account, it's good for to follow your colleagues and those well-known scholars in your field. If you are in luck, one of them can pick up your article and check the description in kudos. Steady presence in Twitter is the best way to get noted, and in this sense, sharing an article through kudos every now and then is a good way to do that. Sharing the same article a few times a year is not actually a bad thing. Same thing goes to LinkedIn, but in Facebook, researchers usually have friends who are not colleagues, so one has to consider how much you want to burden your non-academic friends with news of your articles. But once you do that, you, once you don't do that every week, I guess they can take it, or you can make a special list and share the kudos links to only those of your friends who are interested in your research. Okay, that's all from kudos. I will now show you a bit of our research visibility page in the research guide. Here are some information about KUDOS and, and Tuhat Research Portal, and then uh, some tips on how, how to improve your academic visibility. They include such things as, as, as archiving, self-archiving your articles to Tuhat, and uh, registering for an ORCID number, using the person identifiers, and creating a Google Scholar auto profile, and joining social networks such as ResearchGate or Academy Do, and so on. So uh, here are some links, and then there's information about Google Scholar Auto Profile, which we recommend you to do to to create. And it's it's very nice way to follow your your increase of visibility, and also your age index if you are interested in that kind of thing. And here are some information also about social networks for researchers, such as Academy Edu, Mendeley, ResearchGate, and also some pros and cons of social networks for researchers. You can also get to see some Google Scholar author profiles from University of Helsinki. So that's about all from me. Uh, I wish you a nice time with these tools.